Je suis français de Paris. Have you any special wishes? Je cherche l'oubli. Forgetfulness. That's what most of them ask for. Granted. Next, please. Your name? Wang Du Wa. I am Wang Hong San Yin. I am Hong Yin Chinese. What do you want? Sai Kai Wo Pen Yin Yin Liang Oi. Love and peace. Granted. Next, please. And who may you be? Assistant Secretary to the Lower Admission Office. Oh? Your name? Uh, Maxwell Bart, sir. I'm British. Do you mind? Uh, but I've lived for years in California. Your wish? Well, I'd like to watch some friends for the next 24 hours. What? Look at Earth again? But why? Uh, well, may I answer that in private? There are no secrets here. It's all rather embarrassing. May I whisper, sir? If it makes you feel better. Well, my closest friends were three married couples in San Francisco. You see, the husbands were so completely convinced. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know. How long does it take to read a will? I still think it's funny I wasn't asked to come along. I wonder why. It's obvious. He didn't leave you any money. He was just as good a friend of his as... Oh, it isn't the money. You know I never think of that. Why should you? Haven't you a good husband? Don't I always give you everything your heart desires? <laughs> Where are you going now? Well, I thought I'd try to turn in my seat to the symphony concert. Poor girl, you do miss Max, don't you? Mm. See if you can swap your matinee seat for a pair for the evening. I'll go with you. Arthur Evans, you haven't been to a symphony concert in years. Yeah, what kind of husband are you? Oh, hello, Cam. Hi. <laughs> you also expecting to inherit a fortune? Why shouldn't he next to Ken? My mother thinks we will. Me, I never expect anything. Saves a lot of disappointment. You're a smart boy. You coming? Better go ahead. I'll see you upstairs. So long, Jake. Bye. Wait just a second. Bye, Alex. Please. Yeah, cheer you up. Well, you know, sometimes you're awfully sweet. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Evans. Good afternoon, Miss Reynolds. Do you please wait in the library? I'll tell Mr. Worderman you're here. Thank you.
Oh, hello, Dan. Hi, Art. Well, I didn't know I was going to see you here. And neither did I. I'd rather be over the track. Hey, what's all this about, anyway? The will, I imagine. It's my guess. And what's it going to do with me? It ain't like I'm a relation or a business associate. Hey, maybe it's not the will. Now, what could it be? Mr. Werderman, we'll see you first, Mr. Evans. Hello, Edwin. Come in, Arthur. Sit down. Thank you. Sorry to keep you waiting so long, not at all. You know, it's been one of those days. See, the funerals always upset my schedule. I to hold those things in the evening. Excuse me, Arthur. Yes, Mary. Well, I can't talk to Mrs. Werderman now. Hello, Edwin. Hello, dear. Up us up the cigar. I shouldn't. Yes, dear, I'm listening. You have to be careful, you know. Makes you stop and think, doesn't it? A man like Max in the prime of life passing on so suddenly. Oh, there's nothing sudden about it. Max knew he was going to die. And it was his heart. Yes, yeah, heart. I mean, yes, sweetheart. You'd never have thought it from the way he lived. Why, the last time I saw Max... Yes, dear, I promise. I'll stop at the supermarket on the way home. Here you are. What's this? Max left that for you. But I thought the will was to be read. Isn't that why? He... Well, tomorrow. I'll let you know the time. Executor, I was simply instructed to hand it to you. Not bad news, I hope. Oh, no, no, nothing like that. Just about the business. Well, I'd better be getting on. Working, man, you know? I'll phone you about the will. Yes, the will. Oh, yes, certainly. Well, bye. Bye. So long, fella. So long, Art. So long. Must be good news. Can it? Won't be too long, Dan. Okay. Good afternoon, Miss Fanno. Going down. like this even on the day of his funeral. Gag? Sure. I got a nose for it. I can smell a gag ten miles away, and that's what this is. And I'll tell you something else. That would told me everything else. Okay, so I'm wasting your time. Bill me. I can afford even your fees. <laughs> you don't think it's money, eh? Well... Nah, you didn't know Max the way I, I did. admire your sporting spirit. No, you're talking, Edwin. A natural-born sport, that's me, and a great sense of humor. That'll pull you through anything. Okay, I won't waste any more of your valuable time. You gotta see a man about a horse. A bookie. You forgot something. What? Oh, yeah. I gotta show this to somebody. Who? My wife. She got a great kick out of this. Well, Lucille's got an even better sense of humor than me. <laughs> What's the matter, Kenny? Bad news? Okay. None of my business. Wait a minute, Joe. Read that. Dear Kenneth, I should say probably the right this out of that. I was on the right all that that money goes. Your wife and I. What would you do if somebody said that about your wife? My wife? Impossible. Why? She ain't got the time. You know what I'd do if I was you? I'd beat the living bejeebers out of a guy like that. 
Wish I could. Well, why can't you? A big guy like you? It's not that. Well, I suppose he's small. I suppose he's weaker. He deserves it, don't he? I can't. Well, now, why can't you? Just answer me that. Why not? He's dead. Well, but look what he done to you. Dead. Well, in that case, there's only one thing you can do now. What? There was another party involved, wasn't there? Oh, I don't beat women. Oh, neither do I. Only when it's necessary. Jane? Good afternoon, Mr. Evans. Isn't Mrs. Evans here? No, sir. Didn't you give her my message? She didn't call. You're sure you don't know where she is? She usually tells you, doesn't she? She didn't today. Why not? Suppose one of the children got sick. What would you do? I'd phone the doctor. Haven't you any idea where she might be? Well, usually Fridays. Go on. She went to the symphony concert with poor Mr. Max. Why do you talk about him all the time? Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Evans. I know how badly you must feel about poor Mr. Max. Don't mention that name again! to remember? Think about it. Think back. Arthur, I have a feeling I've caught you bluffing. What makes you think so? You know, you ought never to try to conceal your feelings. You haven't got a poker face. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to raise you again. Give us a look for our investment. Not on your life. Two things one must be reckless about. Poker and women. You want to know. You're lucky with both. Well, <laughs> deal me out of this, will you? Yeah. Hello. Come on, here you go. Oh, hello, my dear. Hey, yeah. Max, is she pretty? Of course she's pretty. What do you think? <laughs> well, well, it's true, isn't it? <laughs> you had a nice day? Mm -hmm. Well, tell me about it. She's married. Uh -huh. No man can get himself an awful Oh, no. Come on, here you go. Hey, Max, see, she's got a friend. Tall and skinny, with good legs. <laughs> yes. Yes. Is she married? Well, she's alone. You got a phone? What do you think? I'll toss you. Don't risk your money. He's bragging. Oh, yeah, Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> Disturbing me? No, on the contrary. You're rescuing me from a bunch of second-hand Romeos. Oh, listen to him. You're going to try being married. Now. He's learned. The facts are lying. Now, <laughs> uh, don't you be so smug, boys. There's plenty I could teach you cut-rate Casanovas. <laughs> Do you hear that? <laughs> hmm? Yes, yes, of course, have a right. Right, thank you for calling that. All right, goodbye. Why do you suppose he's never gotten married? He said that he don't like dames. You're absolutely right, old boy. I like women far too much ever to make wives of them. What's wrong with wives? Husbands? Oh. oh. <laughs> Another drink? Not for no. me. i got to go home. Let's break it up. Oh, it's early, yes. After two. Hey, he's got a bunch of time clock when he goes home. I wish I did. Or he's on night duty. Why didn't I marry a trained nurse? You ever try going home to an empty apartment? Well, at least you don't have to lie when you get in late. Gentlemen, I beg of you, marriage is a sacred institution. I agree with you. Jane and I have never found it necessary to lie to each other. <laughs> hey, Art, what do you do for fun? Hey, didn't you ever tell him just uh, one little He studied one? honor at Harvard. <laughs> Sorry, Arthur, no nightcap for you. Jane just said to remember your stomach. What oh, was that, Jane? Look, Max. I want to talk to you before I leave about those new posters. Arthur, aren't you going to ask me why your wife should ring me up at this time of night? To tell you the latest bright sayings of your godchildren or that Mozart is being played on station KXXY. You underestimate your wife's emotional quality. Jane is a very sentimental woman. Well, what did she want? To remind you to take your pills. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jane for you. She's happiest when we were all tucked in bed at 8.30 with hot milk. Come off it, Arthur. You love going to bed at 8.30 with hot milk. You seem to forget that I'm in the office every morning at 9. 
Uh-oh. Oh. I'll take odds on whose wife it is this time. Listen, tell her I left 20 minutes ago. And then... <laughs> Wait, I'll ride down with you. How'd you meet up? Hello? Good. Uh, no, dear, he hasn't been here all the evening. <laughs> well, I would know where he is. Uh, well, he's probably with a woman. That'll put her in her place. Oh, Arthur, I really will try and come and see you tomorrow in the office. Hmm? You'd better, Max. We're way behind schedule on that new design. Well, if he's not home with you in ten minutes' time, uh, you ring me up and I'll come along and console you. What do you say? Huh? <laughs> All right, dear. Right. Goodbye. I'm glad you reminded me, Arthur. I've got just the artist for you. Meet us at uh, five o'clock tomorrow, at Guglielmo's bar. I'll be there. Right, Max. Hello, Max. Bye. Is Matilda Clegg, but she signs herself just Matilda. Very chic nowadays in her profession. Oh, Max. How do you do? How do you do? Well, I never thought Max's artist would be like you. Well, that's very conventional. Does an artist have to wear smocks and have untidy hair? Well, I'm not conventional. It's just that you were such a pleasant surprise. You're very gallant. Oh, he's the Sir Lancelot of the suburbs. Well, let's not pay any attention to him. My dear, I wouldn't like you to misunderstand Arthur. He's interested in you as an artist. She's very good, too, in spite of her appearance. Oh, I like her appearance. She's... She's... she's very nice. There, you see? Ah, Arthur, don't you let yourself be taken in. She likes to drink with her gloves on because it makes her feel like an adventuress. <laughs> Isn't he wicked? <laughs> <laughs> Joking apart, though, she is clever. And she does need the work. I have a feeling she'd make a first-rate job of those posters. I'm sure she would. Thank you. Well, would you like me to leave now? Or uh, shall we discuss the project? We might do that over dinner. I'll go and see what old Guglielmo's got in his refrigerator, shall I? Well, um, uh, tell me about your work. Oh, there isn't much to tell, really. Max thinks differently. I'd love to show you my drawings. I'd love to see them. When? Whenever you'd like. The sooner the better. My studio's not far from here. North Beach. Well, that's right on my way home. Perhaps I could take you there. Tonight? Why not? Excuse me, will you? Oh, Arthur, I congratulate you. You've succeeded in getting her to take off one glove, which is further than she's ever gone with me. Do you know that Guglielmo has found some small squab chickens even tenderer than Matilda? Let's get Jane to join us, shall we? Oh, uh, well, uh... I'll call her. Oh, no, no. I'll take care of it. Excuse me. I'm dying. I'm just dying. Now, my dear, control yourself, will you? The purpose of this meeting was purely professional. He looks wistful. Is he very unhappy? Matilda, when you feel one of these sentimental, romantic urges coming on, why don't you take up an old bachelor like me? I never take up. Oh, sorry. I'm very sincere. That's why I don't fall in love with you, Max. Frivolous men don't touch me. Too bad. Would you like to see a picture of my godchildren? No. Aren't they handsome? She's the Jane's their mother, and she's also Arthur's wife. They've been married for nine years, and they have never told each other a lie. Mm -hmm. Why do you carry another man's wife in your wallet, Max? Oh, is Jane coming? She's very sorry, but it's the maid's night out, and there's no one to stay with the children. Oh, too bad. Poor things. That means you'll have to go back and keep her company, won't it? Oh, never mind, another time. One more squab chicken for us, eh? Oh, I'm so sorry, darling. I neglected to tell you. I have another date. I hate to do this to you, but it's later than you think. Oh, no, you don't. I've already let you sleep the absolute limit. Come on, now. Up to go. Hey, open up. How many fingers, huh? Six. Oh, darling. Bad hangover, hmm? Late conference. Uh, uh, uh. Please, dear. We never lied to each other before, and let's not start now. There. Max called me up and told me everything. Oh, I can see by your face you have a very guilty conscience. <coughs> Come on, dear, take your pill. You'll feel a lot better. How much did you lose? <coughs> well, for heaven's sake. Oh, excuse me. All right, bad shape. What's the matter with you, anyway? Are you so in love with that game you have to play poker two nights in succession? Well, not that I blame you playing with Max. He's such fun. Is that uh, all he told you? 
Oh, what else is it, Attorney? Oh, nothing, nothing. Oh, so you did lose. I didn't lose at all. As a matter of fact, I won. Hmm? Won. And I'm going to take my best girl out on my winnings. We'll have lunch at the palace. Lunch? Oh, darling, I think I may get to like this game. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, dear, but I can't go. Why not? Today's Friday. Friday? Symphony. Oh, yes. You know how Max loathes being late for the symphony. Mm. So you're going with him again, huh? Uh-huh. Do you mind? Why should I? Well, you know Max's reputation. He doesn't feel that way about you. Doesn't he? He values you for your intellect. My, uh, intellect, hmm? Avant toi, je n'avais jamais connu de telle joie, mon ami. Solitaire, je vais errer sans but, parmi des jours et des nuits sans fin, cherchant, cherchant un idéal sans jamais le trouver. Tu comprends Oui, mon ami. Oui, je sens que tu comprends. C'est un être affamé, brûlé par une soif insatiable, errant, errant dans des vignes aux vignoles. Plein de grappes succulentes, mais, mais les voyant sans jamais les désirer. Ma faim devenait plus exigeante et ma soif plus ardente. Tu comprends Oui, mon ami. <rire> alors, alors tu m'es apparu. Alors tu m'es apparu. Oui, mon ami. Et subitement, subitement, la nourriture, la boisson reprirent reprir leur sens pour moi. <rire> La lumière, l'espace, l'existence, rejoignent leur place dans le monde universel. Fini les cauchemars la nuit, les angoisses sur ma lière. Une seule chose comptait pour moi, c'était de voir s'écouler plus vite les heures qui nous séparaient. Mais tout cela, c'est non, l'histoire ancienne. Oublions nos soucis et nos tracades, alors une seule chose compte maintenant. C'est En ce qui me concerne, je connais un petit village sur la côte d'Azur, pas loin de Tamaris. Des maisons aux toits rouges, des grands arbres, des pins parasols. Oh, pas de grandes plages mondaines et de casinos, non. Mais des petites criques au sable fin, où l'on peut vraiment oublier le monde civilisé. Je ne puis pas imaginer de meilleur endroit au monde pour commencer une vie heureuse, tous les deux. Veux-tu venir avec moi Oh oui, mon amour. It's called Love in the Blood. It's a French picture. They talk French in it, but it tells you underneath what it means. Even if it didn't, you'd understand it all right. And this guy is absolutely sensational. He's a kind of romantic type, but with muscles, you know. There's a scene in it that's so terrific. He grabs this girl and he says, Mon amour, je t'adore. Je t'adore, vous êtes ravissant. Oh, I tell you, I got chills. The girl was good, too. What did she say? She said, oui, mon amour. 
She'd had a lot of trouble in the picture. I tell you, I've seen it three times already, and every time I bawl like a baby. You ought to see it, Jane. You would love it. You would really love it. I know I would. You want to take her sometime? Oh, I will. I, I certainly will. Gee, I'd like to learn French. I got an idea they don't translate some of the best parts. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Would like me to teach you French? Would you, ma'am? Oh, I'd be delighted, of course. Oh, George, have you got any beer? Yes, ma'am. How do you like that? They serve champagne. My wife wants beer. I happen to like beer. So do I. Draw two, George. Yes. Oh, just a minute. Come in, darling. Dear Mac. Oh, dear Tilda. How nice it all looks. Well, how nice of you to say so. Now, this, everybody, is uh, Miss Matilda Clegg. Mary daughter. seems to be enjoying herself. Why shouldn't she, Molly? I didn't know she was so fond of music. I'm awfully bad. This is Mrs. Werdeman. I could listen to a piano all night. Too bad your husband doesn't play. Oh. But he can dance. You don't mind if I steal her? Uh, no, I'll, I'll furnish the accompaniment. Thanks. And this is a great friend of mine, Jane Evans. How do you do? Her husband, I think you know. Oh, this is an unexpected pleasure. I've heard so much about you. About me? My husband's simply mad about your work. As a matter of fact, so am I. Your posters are simply magnificent. Thank you. Haven't I seen you somewhere, Mrs. Evans? A spot of caviar, don't you think? Say, two girls get the story yeah. the oh, yeah. You'll have to watch your step, my pretty. I'm dying. Well, I've heard you die so often, I can't believe it can be serious this time. You think you're so subtle having us both to your silly party. Oh. I'm not going to be influenced, I assure you. That's an imported dress, must have cost $200. No wonder he's always worrying about money. You don't seem to realize we're both sincere. My dear, if you could just manage, you see, I'm not really very bright. If you could manage to have your remarks follow each other in some sort of logical sequence. I know why you did it, to show me the good wife whose life I'm destroying. What about my life? Your life? Well, a minute ago you were dying. <laughs> Poor little Matilda. Don't pity me. It's glorious to love. Glorious to love. Haven't I heard that remark before somewhere? In a French movie? I think I hate you. Oh, I'm sorry, because I like you very much. You hate me. If you like me sincerely, you'd have some sympathy, instead of treating me like a homewrecker. A homewrecker? Anybody think you had a guilty conscience? I've always treated you like a naughty child, which is exactly what you are. Do nothing to be ashamed of. Can I help it if I'm in love? Oh, I thought it was something serious. No, there is somebody here that I would like you to meet. He's a composer. He's just back from Paris. He's talented, and what's more, he's unattached. He's that handsome young man at the piano. That infant? Really, I never thought you'd do anything so obvious, man. <laughs> you will? Sure, how funny. Uh, should I have that? Yeah, I'll tell for you, Max. Danny, do you think the moment has come for our silly number? Oh, well, do you think they can stand it? Oh, who cares about them? We enjoy ourselves, don't we? <laughs> we <laughs> to the piano, everybody. <laughs> we can't yeah. sing it now. Oh, I heard that. Anything wrong? Oh, darling, I'm in despair. Please, Matilda. Indiscretion will get us nowhere. Where are we now? Hiding in corners, sneaking down side streets? As if I were ashamed of loving you. And this, this is the last straw. A husband brought two tickets home to take his wife to Tosca. Quote, I am out with your friend, Oscar. Oscar. Oscar? Oscar. Unquote. <laughs> poor chap. Poor chap. This party. I'm sure he just gave it to humiliate me. Don't be absurd. Max has a birthday every year. He always throws a party. Men can be so cruel and blind. Why must you always exaggerate? I'm only blood. There's a limit to my endurance. I can't go on like this any longer. You've got to decide now, tonight. Oh, darling, I don't care if we never go to Paris. I don't have to live on the left bank. I could live in an American suburb with you. You've got to tell her. You can't do a thing like that quickly. There's too much involved. Five months isn't quickly. We've been married eight years. I can't hurt her. She's never hurt you, I suppose. If you really knew her, you wouldn't ask ridiculous questions. Wait, Alistair. Poor chap, poor 
chap. Poor husband doll, eh, Max? <laughs> <laughs> Just because she's your wife, she's no holier than other women. What are you implying? Can't you see it with your own eyes? They're old friends. Ask her where she was last Friday afternoon. You are getting hysterical. Please, you're hurting me. You're angry with me now. You hate me. Oh, don't be a little fool. I guess it doesn't matter how much you hurt me. I want to make you happy, believe me, darling. Both of you. And I'm afraid you'll have to face the truth. She goes to the symphony on Friday. And after the symphony? I assure you, I'm not the least worried about it. Why not? Are you afraid to know? Oh, don't be a little fool. I'm tired of having to beat about the bush while our love is sacrificed. If you don't ask her, I will. Matilda. Now, that's spread. Oh, Max, absolutely nobody does it as beautifully as you. See, I don't need a wife, do I? <laughs> Beg your pardon? I'm not crowding you, am I? Well, not at all. There's plenty of room. A little white meat from seven, please. Oh. Don't you just adore things in aspic? <laughs> you mean, does a jelly salad send me? Definitely not. Your face is so familiar. I know I've seen you Excuse so... me. Oh, hello, dear. Arthur Evans, are you trying to break up our marriage? Mm hmm. Oh, well, I told him if he ever even looked at another lobster, it was grounds for divorce. Don't you remember what happened last time? Now I know where I saw you last time. I Friday. think I will have some lobster after all. I'm sure it was just my imagination last time. My dear, may I give you some advice? If you ever marry, pick a man with a strong stomach. A great love overlooks trifles. Oh, well, if you'd lived with him for eight years, you'd hardly call Arthur's stomach a trifle. <laughs> Couldn't we talk about something else? We could talk about the three days you spent in the hospital. Let him go to the hospital again, and we'll have as much fun as we had last time. Hmm? Oh, man! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Already? Oh, I got the tickets changed. They were wonderful about it. I'm Stop chattering. Them. Arthur, what's wrong? It isn't the children. Doesn't your conscience tell you? My checking account isn't overdrawn. Don't look so innocent, you... You... Jezebel! Arthur! Well, come to any conclusions? Yeah, give me another drink. Oh, this ain't gonna do you any good, Ken. Might make you feel a little better up to a point, but conclusions... Uh -uh. Okay, okay. I don't know what to believe. I don't know. Yes, you do know. You've always believed it. After all, she was my nurse. <laughs> do you remember? Think back. So there I find myself at last, in the promised land. Columbus, Ohio, <laughs> among my American cousins. I'd been expecting uh, cowboys and Indians. What did I find? Your mother-in-law. Oh. <laughs> Only just as pretty then as you are now. Well, not quite so pretty. Oh, do tell us more. Hello, Ken. You're early, aren't you? Yeah, we didn't expect you till six. If I'm interrupting a tender moment, I can leave. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you must enjoy working overtime. Mm -hmm. Will I have to pay a time and a half? You bet you do. Oh, don't be silly. I wouldn't stick around if I didn't love it so. <laughs> Doesn't Max look wonderful? He's the healthiest looking invalid I ever saw. Shall I tell you something? I've been putting the whole thing on so as to keep this radiant creature near me. Oh, Max. Let me tell you something. I believe it. You ought to be grateful for my heart attacks. If it hadn't been for your ailing cousin, you'd never have met her, wouldn't you? And when you snatched it away from me, I wasn't too pleased either. Were you jealous? Max, were you jealous? Jealous? You know perfectly well that when he first met you, you and I were madly in love with each oh, other. Oh, you want me to get a heart attack too? Oh, just keep this up. I love it. I bet you do. You about ready? Mm -hmm, I'm all packed. Now, you're breaking my heart. It's in pretty bad shape already. I shall probably have a relapse. Oh, how can I thank you enough? The only way that you can thank me is by taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, you remember your promise. If at any time you feel even, even slightly uncomfortable, uh, I want you to call me. I don't care if it's day or night. Oh, sure. 3 a.m., 4, 5? Call me, and I'll be there in 15 minutes. Just like that. Now, you're making promises, and rash ones, too. What happens the night when I'm feeling perfectly well, only just a little bit bored, hmm? Oh, it'll be a pleasure. Hey, break it up. It's a date. We'll be late. 
Oh, we've got plenty of time. Hey, what's that? Isn't it beautiful? Where'd you get it? A grateful patient. Surprise! Surprise! Oh, that funny man's here again. What have you got? Uh -huh. What did you bring me? Uh -huh. Payment in advance. Oh. oh, Ken, an orchid. Happy second anniversary. Oh, I haven't had an orchid in years. I'll wear it tonight. Wait, wait, that's not all I've got. Oh, another present. Madam, you have a doting and extravagant husband. I thought we weren't going to spend any money on presents. What? Huh? What'd you get me? Well, it's not a diamond wristwatch. Oh, Ken. Oh. Hey, mine's bigger than yours. Well, mine's imported. Mmm. Smell. Mmm, yummy. Ooh. On your way. Oh, yeah. Our reservation's at Louis. We're going to stop at the top of the mark for cocktails. And that's only a beginning. Ken, do you know what I'm thinking? What? That will cost an awful lot of money. Well, I thought you wanted to go out. Well, but we haven't spent an evening alone, just the two of us, for such a long time. Holy cat, I've been trying all day to figure out how to sell you that idea. I was afraid to mention it. And I thought you wanted to go out. Oh. oh, I've got a little chicken ready for the broiler and champagne on ice. I'll build a fire. Oh. Champagne? Uh-huh. Pour la fontaine, 1928. Where'd you get that? Max gave it to me, don't you remember? Oh, yeah. Let's drink the whole bottle by ourselves. Oh. Uh, did you talk to mother today? <laughs> what do you think? Did you tell her we were going out? I told her we were going out. Is she uh, angry? Well, if she was, she's too much of a lady to mention it. We'll be entitled to one evening alone on our anniversary. But if we stay home and don't ask her, she'll be terribly upset. Hmm? Hurry up, let's go. We'll be late. Phineas. All right, you answer it. Tell them I'm out. Because if they know definitely they can't get me, well, they'll call another nurse. Tell them yourself. You're a big girl now. You know how to say no. Go on. I want to see how much our anniversary means to you. Hello? Are we lucky? Saved by the bell. Oh. Uh, I'll get the chicken ready. I'll open the champagne. No, you make yourself comfortable. I'll take care of everything. Okay, I'll get shaved. I thought we weren't going out. We're not. Hey, hey, phone Louis and cancel our reservation, will you? All right. Hello? Yes, this is Mary. Oh, hello. No, not tonight. It's our anniversary. Oh, I'm... I'm terribly sorry to hear that. Well, I know, but... But couldn't you... Oh. Well, I'll be there in 15 minutes. Ken, listen, I won't be gone long. If you just let me explain... You've explained something. it now. Now I know how much our anniversary means but, to you. But this is serious. Spare me the details. I've been hearing them for two years. I know all the answers by if now. If you just let me explain... Why bother? Your patient's waiting. Oh. Who is it this time? An old man, 94 years old? Dying of double blood pressure with a touch of fungus? Bad case, huh? No one else can save him, only Mary. Our Mary Whitaker. Always obeys the call of duty. Got it all wrong. My patient's not an old man. He's young and handsome. Divorced three times as a regular playboy. Not sick at all. He's crazy about registered nurses. Always gives them gold things. 
And emeralds to the ones that he likes best. I've been waiting months for this call. Maybe that's not all kidding. What makes you think it is? And cook that chicken whenever you want to, because I probably won't be back all night. Happy anniversary. Hello, son. Hello, Mother. Isn't Mary here? No, she went out. Emergency call. On your anniversary. Oh, I thought you were going to have dinner in a restaurant. Want me to fix something for you? Oh, she'll be back in an hour. Better let me fix you a little supper. Remember the last emergency? What was it this time? I didn't ask. Couldn't be too much of an emergency for only an hour. You want a drink, Mother? I thought you were saving this for some special occasion. Isn't this my anniversary? Oh, perhaps I will have a little sip with you, son, to cheer you up. Here's to you, son. May the later years of your marriage be happier. We're doing all right now, Mother. Did Max call again? I didn't know he called at all. Well, just before you came in, she didn't answer and he called me. He seemed very anxious to get hold of her. Why didn't you tell her? You know, Max, he usually gets what he wants. Is he ill again? I can't take Max's heart attacks too seriously. He always seems to recover so quickly. Oh, Mother, you know he's got a bad heart. <laughs> oh, can't I have my opinion? She's with old Mr. White. He's 75. He's got high blood pressure. I thought you didn't know what the emergency was about. Then there's nothing for you to worry about. Who said I was worried? Well, don't shout at me, son. I'm not deaf. She's not with Max, Mother. I know she is. Well, whoever said she was? Well, not in a very good mood, are you? I think I'll go up and eat my little dinner. Good night, dear. Good night, Mother. day you can see Alcatraz. I know, you're just out for a breath of fresh air. Well, is there any law against it? Oh, no, no, go right ahead. Well, if you see anything suspicious, let us know. What do you think he's up to? I don't know, let's just mosey along and come back. Good night, uh, George. Yes, sir? Bring me a quart of champagne and two glasses, will you? Two glasses, sir? If you're expecting somebody, I can take another night off. Yeah, it's all right, sir. You get the glasses. Yes, sir. Leave your hat and coat here, will you? Yes, sir. Darling, the champagne's just coming up, dearest. That's right, George. Put the two glasses down there, will you? George, take the night off. Yes, sir. And don't hurry back in the morning. Yes, sir. George, remember, 
I spent the evening alone. Darling, will you come down for the champagne or shall I bring it up to you, hmm? Oh. What did you say? Let's go. Darling, I think you'll love this champagne. It's Brut La Fontaine, 1928. I only give it to my favorite. Oh, must be those hoodlums again. Sorry, huh? I don't want to alarm you, sir, but there's a burglar in the house. A burglar in the house? We saw him enter from your terrace. But better let me go ahead. Be careful, obviously. He might be dangerous. Wherever you are, come out. We've got you covered. I want this house searched. You what? Stay where you are. Keep him covered, officer. He looks a desperate character. Where do you think you're going? I'm going to look around upstairs. Don't you like it down here? He can explain everything. Me? The judge would rather hear from you. Come on. Let's be fair, officer. I'd like to hear what he's going to say for himself. But we caught him red-handed. Illegal entry. I was only looking. Oh, a peeping Tom, huh? He could get ten years for that alone, couldn't he, officer? At least. Don't let him kid you. He's my cousin. I've never set eyes on the fellow before in my life. Why, you? McCarthy! Uh, Surround him! Come on, let's go. Come on. There too, the gas chamber. Someone's gone bail for you. Oh, nice. Ken. Oh, it was you. Thanks for nothing. Don't thank me. Hey, you can't go back. You got bail. I don't want any bail. Order, please. Ken, please don't make a worse fool of yourself. Come on. Excuse me, sir. Haven't you forgotten something? Thank you. If it had been up to me, I'd have kept you in there for three or four years. I didn't ask you to bail me out. No, but she did. Some joke. I suppose I gave you both a big laugh. Ken, please. The next time you visit me, Kenneth, come in by the front door. It looks better to the police. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Never mind me. Suppose you start explaining, and it better be good. I'm not going to tell you anything. Where did you go tonight? I started to tell you once, and you wouldn't listen. Now I'm never going to tell you. Either you trust me, or we're quitting right now. Which, Ken? Come on home. <laughs> Joe. What you gonna do? I'm gonna take your advice. There's a time when a man's gotta be a man. Hello, son. Hi, honey. What happened down at Wetterman's office? Was it the will? Mother, would you mind leaving us alone for a few minutes? Marie and I have something to talk about. Well, couldn't it wait, honey? I've got to hurry. It's old Mr. White. He asked for it. You're not going anywhere. Oh, now, you stay out of this. Oh, what's the matter, Shut up. darling? I once asked you to explain something. You refused. Well, now I know. We'd better talk about it when I get back. Keep out that door. You're not coming back. Make up your mind. I'll send for my things tomorrow. You're not alone, son. You still have mother. an audacious king. Max told me to watch that nag. Rest his soul. Where well, are you going to get your tips now? Max is gone. How am I going to miss that guy? Look at you. Look at some show for the neighbors. What's wrong? I'm just getting a little suntan. Can't you wear a sunsuit? You got plenty of dough to spend. Charge accounts in all the stores. I got three sunsuits. I'm just too lazy to put one on. Oh, dames, give me the sheet. No. If I had on a sunsuit, you'd tell me I was getting fat again. So why bother? Remember what you looked like last year? Have a piece. It'll sweeten your disposition. Okay. Get fat. See if I care. You care, all right. You'd like a streamlined model to brag about. I don't know what's getting into you lately. You just have such a sense of humor. Which do you want, McCabe? A sense of humor or a glamour girl? 
I happen to like candy. Yeah, and I like beer and sodas and mashed potatoes. We worked hard for our dough. What's the good of it if you can't enjoy life? I can enjoy life without going in training for the fat lady in a sideshow. You're awful crabby today. What'd you have for lunch? I'm crabby. How about you? I come home to hand you a laugh. Something Werdeman gave me. What'd I get from you? A caramel. Crazy. All right, so don't tell me. <laughs> what do you want to know what Wordman gave me? I don't care if he gave you a black eye. Uh, you're the one that got the black eye. From Wordman? He's not the type that would make cracks about a lady. A gentleman, huh? Like your friend Max. You should be such a gentleman, McCabe. No gentleman to pull a gag like this. Don't speak ill of the dead on the day of the funeral. What's the gag? <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> Most husbands would be sore if someone said this about their wives. Sure. I would, too, if I believed it. You're awful sure it's a gag. I got a nose for it. I can smell a gag 10 miles away. You might be surprised, McCabe. You mean you and Max? Eh, hey, don't try to kid me. Oh, I didn't have class enough, huh? Well, I'm not saying anything against you, but I'm a man. I know what men go for. Eskimos go for blubber. He was no Eskimo. A glass of beer or a romance? Max would have only the best. That's why he picked you for a friend, I suppose. But didn't he? From the very first moment we met, we were just like, like that. Sure, at the stables. Oh, you were all right for a judge of horse flash or a few laughs. How do you like... How do you like that? I was over at his place all the time. The poker games. But did he ever ask you to dinner or come to see us or invite you to his party till he met me? I'm not a woman. I don't remember things like that. Well, jog your memory. You remember, all right. Hmm? Me and Max? You remember. Think back. That's the work. It's Lammer Boy by three quarters of a night. By the time second, Mr. Biscuit and the Blue. on Glamour Boy. Come on, boy, throw him your tail. Shut up and sit down, Shut will you? When you're in the box, you ought to act like it. Listen, for my 50 bucks, I got a right to yell. Come on, keep going. Most of these people keep... are 50 times 50 better than a horse. See them jumping up and yelling? <laughs> President of an amalgamated associate is looking at you. What am I supposed to do? Drop dead because associated amalgamated looks at me? Amalgamated associated. You see, amalgamated industries associated with amalgamated. No, associated amalgamated. He's one of our best customers. Smile for Pete's sake. I'll bet you 50 bucks those two zombies are after some dough. Don't point. With you, it's always dough. He does a lot of charity work. He's probably members of the committee. You could join one of them. Not me. My mother was scared by a committee. Max Bard's here. Put it back on your hat. I can't see with an arm. For $80, it don't make no difference whether you can see or not. What will people think? They come to see the horses, not look at me. What are you going to bet on? Thunder Fourth or be yourself? That must be Evans Lightfoot. The long-legged type. Some class. Too thin. 
Put it back on. He's looking at you. What did he ever do that's so special, besides taking your money at poker? For one thing, he owns Glamour Boy. Glamour Boy? If that's high society, excuse me. Where are you going? Get a hot dog. If you're hungry, why don't you go to the clubhouse? Get a club sandwich. I feel like a hot dog. Where do you think you are? Seal Beach? Was it so bad there? You get me crazy sometimes. We work hard all our lives. We finally meet some classy people. What do you do? Eat hot dogs. Listen, McCabe, I started out in life selling popcorn. And if my luck don't improve today, it looks like I'll wind up that way, too. Uh-uh. Associated Amalgamated is calling you. One dog without, one coke here. I'm telling you, lady, it's Thunder Force. Look at the odds. I look. It's not my place to pass an opinion, madam, but I've worked the whole thing out mathematically, and the odds are right. I don't know. That Thunder Force just don't appeal to me. You got a better choice? I got a feeling about be yourself. A sticky feeling? Like you was close to the glue factory? That's be yourself. <laughs> Take my word for it, madam. Be yourself is a fool's gamble. Mathematics never fail. Yeah, how many races did you win? Cleaned up $432 this season. On paper, I'm telling you, only the schnooks are putting their dough on be yourself. He ain't got a glimmer. Forgive me for butting in, sir, but you know, that's only one man's opinion. Your dog, madam, without. Thanks. OK, Jack, do you want to join the schnooks? The schnooks, well, it sounds an admirable organization to me, but I'm afraid I only join clubs when they become wildly unpopular. I'm sorry. My money's on be yourself. Don't take any tips from him. He owns Glamour Boy. I bought Glamour Boy on the advice of one of the greatest horse racing experts in this country. Which one? Your old man. Oh, ask his advice about women sometime. He's an expert on that, too. Mm, so I notice. I don't blame him for keeping this filly a secret, do you? Say, I think I'm gonna like you. Same here. Be yourself, huh? Always. It's gonna cost you money, lady. I'm warning you. So you're Max Barr. And you're Lucille McCain. <laughs> How do How you do? You do? Send up now, but I think we're being followed. Just protecting the lady's interest, bud. You've got exactly 45 seconds left to get your money down on the right horse. Mm. And we can place it for you. Thank you for reminding me. I'll put five on the nose for you. Why bother with the machines, Jack? I'm mechanically minded. That phony ain't gonna put any bets down for you, lady. That's his racket. Why don't you give him the brush? We happen to know the bona fide owner of Glamour Boy. Yeah, and it ain't him. Now, if you want to listen to oh, us... Oh, there the... you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. Just a minute, Jack. This lady and I was talking. You happen to know this lady? Yeah. Do you? Slightly. She's my wife. Oh, Flo. The odds are that he will be surprised. Clubhouse ain't good enough for you, huh? I'll leave you alone for a minute. What do you do? Associate with Flotsam and Jetsam. How did you know their names? How did I... Those two gentlemen happen to be friends of mine. So I see. The kind of characters you'd expect in an environment like... Hey, Max! <laughs> Dan? What are you doing here? Hey, I want you to meet my wife. I always wanted to get you two together. Be yourself. Be yourself? What are you doing? Oh, can you beat the... I see you two have met. Yes, we ran into each other at the hot dog counter. Do you like a pipe? No, I I gotta be going, so you had some back with oh. you. Oh, no, don't change. It couldn't look nicer than it does now. Thank you. I got bad news for you, Lucille. I can't drive you home. What's bad news about that, the way you drive? What happened? Associated Amalgamated needs a free ride? One of my associates, Jonathan Rim, on the way over to Oakland, he wants to talk over a deal. Yes, Jonathan Rim, we all know him. Why don't let me take you home? I drive even worse than your husband. You couldn't, but you got a deal. You don't have to bother. She can take a cab. She's found her way home before. You been any chance free for dinner? I certainly am. Good. See you Is later. Is mine? Oh, no, no. Your wife, huh? I suppose you own two horses. Dang. time for a decent woman to be getting in. I thought you'd been killed or something. I wasn't killed. Where have you been? Having fun. Fun, huh? That Max, he's great. He is so funny, that guy. You want to know what he told me? Yeah, what? <laughs> Come on to bed. I'm tired. I want to hear my story. We used to have so much fun together, you and me. Remember? What's the idea of getting me all worried, huh? Were you worried, kid? Were you worried? <laughs> what? 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 Oh, isn't he cute? Max bought him for me. Says he looks just like you. <laughs> Hurry up, will you? Don't wait for me. Why not? Oh, that's how you're wasting your time, huh? 
You used to yell at me because I dressed so fast. Now I waste time. How do you like the outfit? You're okay. Come on. I hope it's classy enough for you. Max picked it out. What are you putting that stuff on for? You like it? I suppose Max picked that out, too, huh? His favorite. Some taste he's got. Come on. Well, we're gone. Nobody will smell you. Why not? It's obvious. Where do you think I'm going? To the stable. Biddy's waiting to be fed. Go on, feed her, then. You mean you're not coming? Not today. I got something more important. More important than your own horse? Forget it. You're coming with me. I can't, possibly. What is it so important? I got a committee meeting. <sighs> I never thought I'd live to see the day when you ditch your own horse for a bunch of female zombies. You ain't putting on that perfume for them. You want your wife to go out with society people smelling of stables? Well, why don't you get going? You were in such a hurry. I'll take you wherever you're going. You needn't bother. I'm getting picked up. By who? By whom? By who? The chairman of the committee. What are you waiting for? I thought your poor horse was starving. What's worrying you? One of the zombies might see you with the lower classes? Don't answer that. Here comes the chairman. <laughs> Must be two other zombies. Hi, Max. Taxi, ma'am. I thought you'd never get here. Oh, darling, am I late? I'm so sorry. Hello, Tan. I wasn't expecting to see you. I thought you were going to a committee meeting. Well, she is. I'm the chairman. Did you tell him? What don't I know? It's going to be one of those long meetings, too. You know what it is. Passing resolutions, seconding motions, votes of thanks, yak, yak, yak. And I'm afraid that this ravishing creature, she may not be home for dinner tonight. Hope you don't mind. Oh, no. That won't bother him. He'd rather be with his horse. Sure, with his horse. Oh, well, chacun a son goût. What's that? French. Every man to his taste. Shut the door, old thing, will you? Well, uh... Merci, mon petit. Au revoir. Au revoir. Merci. French. Il pleuvra demain, mon oncle et moi, nous n'irons pas aux courses. It will rain tomorrow. My uncle and I cannot go to the races. Right. Le gratte-ciel a 36 étages. Oh, the skyscraper has 36 stories. Right. Hmm. Mon mari dort, il a bu trop de bière. My husband's sleeping. He's had too much beer. Right. Come on, 100% get that perfect. McCabe. I talk French. Okay, only be careful what you say around the kids. What's that? Oh, who cares? Je suis en français. Perfect. Get that McCabe, je suis en français. Yeah, je suis cheese. Leave me alone. I'm <laughs> now going to demonstrate a very famous continental custom, very elegant. Watch me. <laughs> One continental custom coming up. Oh, wrong continent. <laughs> hey, what's going on? Uh, uh, oh, look, Dan. What? Oh, the Oakland Ferry. So what? Well, don't you remember? Yeah, I remember. May 10th, 1938. What happened then? We spent our honeymoon on that. Uh, riding back and forth on the poor man's Atlantic. Ah, uh, uh, why don't you go to a few more people, huh? Get a megaphone, broadcast on the radio. We were all young once, Dan. Oh, was this one ever young? Full of beans. He was always going to take me traveling mm. to Europe and places. You ain't done so bad. Yeah, but I always wanted to see the world. What's the world got to California. Come on, let's go home. You know, I'm going to get you another beer. Go, no, go, I don't want, I don't want the Go more. get it. I'll drink it if he doesn't. Do we always have to hang around here until the rooster crows? Oh, we got a home. Don't be a big cow. Okay, I'm a big cow. But after 3 a.m., I can't give milk. I'm tired. That's what you always say, just when I'm having fun. I get up early and I work for a living. So do a billion other people. They don't complain. They do, but you don't hear them. You're too busy running around at committees, learning French, buying new dresses. I thought that was the kind of wife you wanted, McCabe. Oh, you're just in time. I was getting thirsty from arguing with him. Danny boy, there's one rule in this house, no arguing. One beer coming up. I ain't thirsty. Oh, oh I'll be a a night, Captain. Okay, I'm a sport. Uh -huh. Here's to you, Max. What's the fun, us. Max? Here's to us. To fun, frolic, and jollity. Mm. Honestly, we've had more darn fun this last year. Haven't we, Dan? <laughs> Thanks to a certain laugh parties. to me. Uh, well, oh, well. Do you remember the night I cooked the goose? Mm. Uh, <laughs> see you, Beach. <laughs> I almost got poisoned. Oh, man, forget uh, it. Uh, 
you say it rests for a bigger game than he brought back. Yeah, but how about the rubber neck pass? The rubber neck pass? I got to thank you, pal. You've been a real pal, pal. I got to thank you. I got to thank you for teaching my wife how to talk French. I got to thank you. No, I got to thank you. No, I got to thank you for teaching my wife how to act like a lady. I got to thank you for being the biggest sport that ever drew breath. Yes, he is. What have I got to thank you for? Honestly, you've been so nice. Please, darling, about all of you. The husband loved his little wife. She ran, ran off with a draper. She didn't know how far she'd go to they be read it in the paper. paper. Who step, Max, huh? Poor, poor chap, poor, poor chap. chap. He, he just couldn't understand. He was left, left with the paper, paper the mean wicked paper. paper. He, he was left with, with the paper in his hand. hand. Woo! He was left, left with, with the paper, paper in his hand. Uh, Woo! paper in his hand. Sucker. You remember, all right. Well, ain't that great? My wife, after all I've done for you. What were you when I met you? Selling popcorn for a living. And I didn't quit when we were married, remember, Dan? You didn't have a cent. Now look at you. Real diamonds. French perfume, $80 hats. What do you do with them? Carry dogs in them. And do you thank me for it? Do you? I thank you to quit yelling. Some to be a sucker and not say anything about it, huh? Rise above it. Be a nice fellow, Dan. Have you heard what they're saying about Dan McCabe? <laughs> a little like this. Most wives would take a thing like this seriously. So would most husbands. I do. I do. What do you think? Honey, God, au voisin. Please, the neighbors. Shut up, you. I'm still the man in this house, and you'll be the wife the way I see it, or else you'll get out. Do I hear correctly? You sure do. There are some things no man will stand for, not if he's a man. Some things no woman will stand for either. Maybe you forget this is my home, too. It is, huh? Yeah, and I'll fight for it to the last toothpick. Okay, so it's a fight. You'll see. Left with a paper in his hand, huh? Not Dan McKay. Hey, where are you going, stupid? To see a smart lawyer. You can send this open now. All right. Good morning. I'm Mrs. Evans. I received a telegram. Oh, yes, Mrs. Evans. Isn't Mr. Evans with you? Uh, he'll be along later, I hope. The telegram specifically asked for both of you. Mr. Werderman will be upset. Aren't we all? Jenny. Good morning, Mary. Mrs. What Whitaker. Are you? Yes? I'm glad we finally reached you. We couldn't get you at home. I wasn't there. Is your husband coming? Did you tell his mother? Oh, yes. He's coming. Well, good morning, all. Lucy. Good morning, Mrs. McCabe. Morning. Where's Mr. McCabe? I thought you might know. I don't. Well, at least you ladies are here on time. Mr. Werderman will appreciate that. Promptness is one of his standards. He'll be a few minutes late. Will you step this way, please? A committee meeting, huh? I wonder what's cooking. I don't know, but apparently our husbands are expected to. Oh, no, no kidding, Lucille. Don't you know where Dan is? I thought I was sent for to talk over the case of McCabe versus McCabe. What? A divorce? You two? Both of you? So suddenly? Last night, about 10 o'clock, that big ape calls the butler and says to pack his things. Not just his pajamas and toothbrush, all his things, and bring them someplace. Well, didn't you ask the butler where? I got pride, but I wish I'd had him followed. Then this morning, I get Werderman's wire. I should be here. You having trouble, too? I left him. It just couldn't be a coincidence. No, it certainly was. We've been in training for it a long time now. No, no, I mean, all three of them. Not Arthur, too. Arthur, too. Well, at least you know where he is. I certainly do, <laughs> snoring on the living room couch. He didn't come in at 4 a.m. this morning. After making the most incredible accusations, he dashed out of the house, and I... I found him asleep on the couch this morning. I left the telegram on his chest like a lily. I wonder what's got into them all. I don't know what's eating your boys, but Dan got a letter. A letter? Werdeman gave it to him. Kenneth saw Werdeman well, yesterday, Arthur was too. Here, but do you know what was in the letter? 
Oh, nothing much. Your boys couldn't have got the same news. It was about me and Max. Max and you? You and Max? In love? Yeah. What's so impossible about that? Oh, dear. You and my husband both. Oh, that's what Arthur was so upset about. Arthur suspected you? Oh! Well, then why not? A symphony concert. Well, of course, you would feel that way about it, but afterwards... Uh, we you had tea together, We I had suppose. tea together. I, we certainly did, but at his house was always his man's day off. Oh, yeah. You're both bragging. How would you know? Yeah, a kid like you. Oh, I took care of him through four heart attacks. I was with him day and uh, night. When a man's as sick as that, he's not interested in women. He always kept me on through convalescence. That Max. Good morning, good morning, girls. Hi, Good morning. morning. I'm sorry to be late, but I was late in conference, the uh, divorce case. I believe the others are here. Won't you uh, come into the library? mentioned organizations and institutions to be distributed in the manner provided for in paragraph 12 of this last will and testament. I think you'll find that what follows will interest you more. To Matilda Clegg, for the development of her unique talents, tuition for two years and living expenses, provided the beneficiary studies and takes up residence in Paris, France. And to my cousin, Jenny Bard Whitaker, our grandfather's house and property in Columbus, Ohio, providing she takes up immediate residence there. The will contains only two more clauses. I'll read the first clause first. Naturally. The remainder of my estate is to be divided equally among my dearly beloved friends, Jane Evans, Mary Whitaker, and Lucille McCabe. <laughs> I can't stand you, man. But it's not right. They were nothing to him. We're the next of kin. It's his will, Mother. Oh, you ought to be angry. You were cheated. Columbus, Ohio. If he thinks I intend to return, we are going to fight this to the end, son. Don't worry. I won't take the money. Don't be crazy, Mary. Max meant you to have it. I'm rich. Me, McCabe. Please, please. Now, if you'll allow me, I'll continue. In making these requests, I am expressing my belief that women are better wise if they are not dependent on the peccadilloes, the weaknesses, the whims and pretensions of their husbands. There are no provisions or restrictions attached to these requests. The legacies may be used as the beneficiaries see fit, either to enhance their marriages or to make themselves independent of financial restraint. To my friends, Arthur Evans, Kenneth Whitaker, and Daniel J. McCabe, I solemnly bequeath the good news that the confidential letters delivered to them yesterday were written for the best purpose of causing them grief and disturbance, so that they reconsider the charms and virtues of their respective wives better to appreciate them. And the additional information that said letters, being intentional fabrications, are false, deceitful, and untrue. That's all. Thank you. I should think it was all. It's the most ridiculous one I've ever heard of in my life. It's not going to be the end, I assure you. I assure you. I want to talk to you, Ed. Oh, I'm sorry. My wife's waiting for I me. I only want to ask you one question. That divorce complaint you talked about before, is it Dan McKay? No, your husband is not my client. Then I am. Jane! Oh, Arthur, I'm so glad I caught you. I must talk to you. Couldn't we talk what about I this later? What I am about to say will affect the course of our entire lives. Sorry, I've got to talk to you. Oh, let me go. You don't have to act like an heiress so soon. I don't want the money. Then at least you can listen to me. Hey, hey, hey. What's the idea of changing the lock on me? I couldn't get in. That's your idea of a gag or something? I didn't want you in my house. 
Your house, huh? Okay, get technical. I suppose that's the advice of your lawyer. I'm filing a countersuit. I'm the one that's got the grounds. Not so loud, McKay. What'll people think? Let me tell you what I think. Well, now I hope you'll understand why I've arrived at this tragic decision. I couldn't come between a man and his children and his wife. No. Time will heal our wounds, dear. If that's the way you want it, Matilda. We must face it bravely. This is goodbye. Goodbye, Matilda. Arthur, Jane. now that the economic barrier is removed, I feel it's only fair that you should have your freedom. I'll see my lawyer in the morning. If that's the way you want it, Jane. Uh, there's just one thing I'd like cleared up before I go ahead. You believed that letter of Max's, didn't you? No, not for a minute. Don't lie. You called me a Jezebel. Why? All right, I did. I believed it. I was jealous. You were? Oh, thank you, darling. That's wonderful. You don't have to be jealous of any man before we met or, or since we're married or, or ever. I have nothing to... Didn't you tell me the letter was true? You confessed it of your own free will, didn't you? <laughs> well, didn't you? You must be slipping, McCabe. I thought you could spot a gag a mile off. That it was a gag. You and him made it up just to fool me, huh? Honi soir, qui mali pas. What's that? French. What's it mean? You'll have to wait and ask Max. Uh... If I were a lawyer, I'd get rid of my clients rather than keep my wife waiting. Here, take these. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. I want you to tell me something truthfully. How well did you know Max? 